Hi guys, so today we're going to discuss about fuzzing a Golang uh, package and especially we're going to fuzz the debug elf uh, library. So it's uh, one of the official uh, library available uh, and provided by um, Google directly um, and, uh, and the Golang repository. So uh, for that we're going to use uh, GoFuzz that is one of the most famous I would say even the most famous fuzzer available when it, you, you are dealing with uh, Go packages. So uh, let's, uh, let's start. So as I mentioned, the target will be this one. So inside the Golang Go uh, repository, it's debug elf. So the main idea with this library is basically like a, an utility uh, package library to deal with uh, elf uh, files. So the, the Linux um, executable file format, basically. So uh, we're going to do something really simple that will just consist to uh, load um, some arbitrary bytes and we're going to fuzz this uh, package uh, like that. So we are expecting to find bugs that will be related to like parsing of this uh, kind of uh, binary. So um, I will target especially this uh, function, the new file function inside the elf uh, file.go. Uh, so this file take a reader, so um, we will need to take that as a consideration when we're going to create the first target for uh, GoFuzz. So let me show you uh, what I've done. So um, as you can see uh, right there, so we have the classical uh, cheat sheet if we need. So I create this uh, file uh, exactly. So let me zoom in, it will be better for you. So uh, nothing really complicated. I create like a, a new repository. I create a main.go file and inside this one, uh, I'm creating a basic Fuzz, fuzzing function named fuzz and we're going to use that uh, later. So this function uh, take as an argument some data bytes so uh, that's what the fuzzer will provide um, to this function. We're going to use this data um, stuff inside um, this byte new reader so we're going to create a reader file so if you remember that what uh, we are uh, asking for right now io reader at so we need to have a reader interface so we are creating this reader interface right there and after that we are calling the elf new file function we don't really care about the output uh, for the moment i mean if you want to improve the further of course it will be better to um, take a look at the at the output stuff and maybe um, take a look at the internal structure and, and first some other function and so on but we're going to keep it simple for the moment so right there we have the error and we are just ch checking if the error is not null or not uh, and so on. i mean that's really simple but it will do the job pretty well then uh, we will need to have a make file i mean we need to have like a um, the compilation phase and the uh, running phase so i put everything into a make file that will look like that um, for this specific stuff we are um, overwriting the go path variable just to have everything local we don't want to maybe mess up with your actual golang environment so we're going to keep it everything local and uh, we're going to uh, deactivate the uh, golang module so that's the um, environment variable that will be used by the make, the make file then we have the build. So basically, we're going to download GoFuzz uh, since it's not part of the, uh, of the Go toolchain. So we need to uh, download it. Uh, we are doing also a pipe, pipe uh, true just to be sure uh, it will work even if, if there is any kind of error by go get. That's the classical stuff when we are doing like a go get something. Um, and for example, if the package doesn't contain any Go file, uh, you will get like a, an error message kind of, and uh, it's not handled properly by the, by the make file basically. So you need to use these tricks. And then we're going to use the go first build command and we're going to specify which function. So in that case, it's the first function. So this command line especially will generate us um, that. So let me show you. So we are inside the elf first folder. So we're going to do make build. Uh, let me zoom in. Okay. Make build. So as you can see, go get, uh, no go file, go first build, uh, func fuzz, and right now we have a zip file. 
So that's the files that have been created, the, the, the zip package have been created by um, Gophers, uh, and uh, we're going to provide that to Gophers in order to uh, fuzz our target. So uh, in order to do that, we need to use this Gophers command. Uh, we're going to, um, I, I specified the number of processor, the number of threads that I want to run because it will do some parallelism work and so on, uh, and only want to have two of them. Um, to be honest, the main reason uh, of that is because this package is, uh, I already give a try and, and fuzz it and find some stuff on it. And uh, there is some out of memory bugs inside, uh, meaning that this stuff will actually uh, consume uh, all my memory. And uh, at some point, I mean, I don't want to, to, to mess up with the recording of everything and so on. So we're just going to limit him for the moment and um, that will be okay. We need to specify the uh, binary, so in that case the zip uh, folder, uh, I mean the zip package, and we need to specify a working directory. So I specified this one. Um, basically, inside this working directory, you will get a lot of stuff. Uh, especially, you will get like the corpus, so it will be all the input files and the files that will be generated by the time. You will get uh, some uh, crashers. Um, so that's basically. Um, if you have any crushing file, uh, basically, and you have suppression, it will be a custom folder where um, if you already, I mean, if Gophers already detects some bug, it will just uh, put them on the suppression just to be sure it will not like re-trigger them over the time. That's basically it. So that's good. We can run the further. So let's do make uh, run. And uh, what you will see is that after the go build, we will uh, run the fuzzer, so go fuzz with the number of, pro uh, of procs. So we have two workers, we have some corpora for the moment, and as you can see, I already have three crash that have been detected by the fuzzer. So I just run the fuzzer for, qu for quite some time, and I, I get that. I mean, it was like in less than 10 minutes, I would say. Uh, and you have the number of total execution and the number of execution per second uh, and you have the uh, current coverage. So you will not get a lot of coverage uh, with this specific um, buzzing target because we are only targeting one specific function that will be pretty limited uh, but you will still be able to find some crash. Uh, if you have any crashes you can just go in, inside cat, um, I mean you are doing cat you are doing inside uh, you are going inside the working directory and you can take a look at crashers and you can directly take a look at the outputs so this one for example this specific file will generate the program to eng so we don't know exactly what is it uh, but um, it could be like a huge elf file that is taking some time to to process you can take a look at this one so this one is really interesting it's a panic directly that have been uh, triggered. So um, it will be a, a, a panic triggered at runtime. So it will basically, the kind of vulnerability that will be implied is like a denial of service. Um, if you have, I don't know, if you are using this package and you are providing that to the user, like the user is able to provide you any elf file, the, that means the user will be able to do like a denial of service of your stuff, except if you are handling the, pan the panic uh, properly, basically. So it's a slice bounce out of range. Uh, it's one of the most common vulnerability we can have uh, in uh, in Golan. And the final one, uh, not really verbose, I think. Yeah, it's just signal kill. So that was uh, one of the um, out of memory bugs I mentioned. So that's uh, basically it. As you can see, it was pretty easy. I mean, it's not really complicated to find uh, to to fuzz a Golang package, uh, especially with GoFuzz. It's pretty easy. Uh, we are finding some bugs, and after that, you can just um, try to after that do more in deep analysis. So for this one, it's pretty straightforward because we have the the stack trace uh, right there. Uh, but for the other one, it will uh, require a bit more uh, analysis, of course. So uh, as usual, you have everything. You have all the all the command line and all the stuff directly on this uh, cheat sheet. So uh, I invite you to take a look at that. Um, for the bug I mentioned, uh, they are already reported. I think uh, this one is like the a slice one out of range, and this one is maybe the out of memory bugs. I don't really know. I don't. I still don't know why uh, they are not fixed yet. I mean, of course, it's taking time, but I'm pretty sure there is also some 
older version of this package and other vulnerability in this package as well. So um, it could be uh, interesting, uh, especially if you are familiar with like the the Golang repository and the, and you are able to do any pull request. Please um, do it uh, and um, let's try to make this package a bit more uh, secure. You can also take a look at the uh, previous video I made regarding fuzzing um, Golang package. Uh, this time it was with uh, still GoFuzz but using the LipFuzzer option, meaning that it will not be GoFuzz that will do the fuzzing but LipFuzzer uh, that will be uh, under the hood. Uh, it's really nice, really efficient. Uh, personally, I prefer to use LipFuzzer than directly GoFuzz, so I will uh, invite you to take a look at that. Uh, I hope you appreciate and um, I completely forget, but um, I also have my uh, new training, um, Go Security Audit and Fuzzing, where basically you will learn everything you need to learn about which kind of vulnerability are uh, inside um, Golang packages, which kind of vulnerability can happen, also the more complex one related to like unsafe code and so on. And especially you will learn everything you need to learn about um, Golang Fuzzing. So if you're interested, uh, please take a look at, uh, at that. And um, since I'm doing currently the pre-sales, you have 20% uh, off uh, directly on the training. So let me know. And if you have any question, please uh, do. Um, so see you next time for another video.